So if I can have your attention up here, please. Thank you. So I'm Mrs. Radishak. We're all students from OU, and right now I'm student teaching at Bridge Junior High. So I have eighth graders, they're a little smaller than you. And I'm teaching algebra and geometry. So um, today, just to start, like how many of you have learned factoring already? Okay, that's what I figured. Today's gonna be a little bit of a review, but um, considering my geometry kids have already forgotten what they learned in algebra, I figured some of you guys might have already forgotten it also. So to start, we're gonna play a little game. I have two numbers in my head. They multiply to 88, and they add to 26, is what I think. Two numbers. <laughs> Twenty two and four. What? Twenty two and four. Twenty two and four. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. okay, you guys, I have two numbers and multiply to negative twenty four and they add to five. What are they? Negative eight and three. Negative eight and three? Do you guys see that? No. no. Eight and negative three, sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. eight and yep. negative. Eight and negative two. three. Okay, so let's try one more. So let's say, everyone. Okay, let's say we have two numbers that multiply to 100 and add to negative 20. Okay, so you guys see this is pretty straightforward, pretty easy. That's our basic steps for factory. Or that's one of our basic things. Um, also, let's just say, let's review multiplication. Um, so I want you to tell me what is wrong with this. What's, what's wrong? You, you missed the, the X, you missed the score Okay, so do you think I should have a negative four X in here? Yeah. Why? Because you multiply it. Because, because I have a Yeah, so if you multiply, remember we're foiling. So we're multiplying our first one, so X times X. X squared. And then outer, X times <laughs> negative seven. Negative seven X. Inner. Plus three. Thank you. And last. Minus 21. Minus 21. Okay, are we done here? Simplify. Add like terms. Add like terms. Okay. So here's our like terms. So this simplifies to x squared minus 4x minus 21. Okay, so let's do one more example of multiplication. Can I have a volunteer come up here? <laughs> Do you guys agree? We have four terms here before we combine like terms? Yes. 
Okay, so I want to create those four terms again. We have these three terms, we want to create four terms. So, also, okay, well, we're going to get to that, but before that, um, going here, going from four terms to three terms, which terms stay the same? Okay, so we know that our first term, the x squared one, and our constant are both going to stay the same. So it's this middle term that two terms come out of. Does that make sense? Okay. And now this is where the first activity comes in. We're going to multiply 5 and 8, because those are our outer terms, our x squared coefficient and our constant. We get 40. So we want two numbers that multiply to 40, but add to 14. 4 and 10. 10 and 4. Okay. You guys are tracking. So now we put these here. Now when you have four terms in your factory, what do you guys normally do? Grouping. Grouping. Perfect. So our first two terms, we have 5x squared plus 10x. What do they have in common? What's their grades come out with? 5x. So we're going to take that out, and when we factor out of 5x, what do we have left in those two terms? Thank you. Okay, and then our last two terms, 4x plus 8, what do they have in common? Four. Yeah, so we're going to factor out a positive 4. And then what do we have left when we? X plus 2. Great. And then here, now you can kind of think of factoring out a greatest common factor again. So this term has an x plus 2, and this term has an x plus 2. Okay? So we factor that out. What do we have left? Yep. Yeah. There we go. We're done. We factored this seemingly ugly thing. Pretty simple, straightforward. Can we do another one? Of course. You're up for it? You're up for it? Okay. You are not. You are not. Okay, you guys. Come to up here. Okay, right, so that's my first step. I have three terms. I want to factor. What am I going to do? Multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to multiply the first and the last. Okay, so this comes down, so this comes down, and then we have a negative 6x and a negative 5x. Okay, so now we're going to factor by grouping again. So what's my greatest common factor? I'm going to first Thank you. So what do we have left? What about on the plus side? So why do you guys pull out a negative 5 instead of a positive 5? Negative 2, it is yeah, so you guys are thinking ahead. We want these two to be the same so that we can combine them in our last step. So if we had originally just pulled out a positive 5, they wouldn't have matched. And we would have thought, hmm, what else could we do? And we would pull out the negative one. Okay, so from here, we have two matching terms, the x minus 2s. We're going to pull that out. And what is our other term? 3x minus 5. Okay, so this is pretty easy for you guys, straightforward. So my question is, I make it a little harder. Not too much harder, just a little. Is someone brave enough to come up here and try this problem? It's just a little harder. What do you guys think? Okay, so we want to do this as a group still, no one wants to come up? Okay, we'll do this as a group. So, why would we want to factor out an x first? To make the x first and the x squared. And they all have x first. Why do you think we want to call it 4x instead of just x? Because we want to have a similar value. Yeah, so we want to call our greatest common factor, so that would be 4x here. So then what do we have left if we're factoring out 4x? 2x squared. Plus Thank you. Plus two. Great. Okay. And so one thing that at least my students do, I don't know if you do this, they just like, this just disappears. You never see the 4x again, which is not allowed. Like it's still part of that equation. So make sure you're keeping track of this guy. So now we want to look at this quadratic that we have left. We want to do our method we've been using. So what do we need to find? 
so a times c is 4. And so we want numbers that multiply to 4 but add to 4 and 1. Add to 5. Add to 5, so 4 and 1. Great. Okay, so we're keeping that 4x. This comes down. Last one comes down. And we know this one split into positive 4x and positive x. Okay? So if we keep going, what we want to do is like grouping, as we have been. So what's our next step? Maybe this is a bracket. Nothing. Uh, 2x squared plus 5. Oh, you add it. Yeah, so one step at a time. We have 2x squared plus 4x, so 2x is our greatest common factor. Agree? Yeah. Okay. So what do we have? x plus 2. Wonderful. And then what about on this side? What's our greatest common factor? Plus 1. Yeah, just a positive 1. So sometimes people can't see that as a factor. <laughs> okay. So what's our last step? Let's put this in final factor form. Yeah. Just pull so we have our 4x. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions over factoring? How you can deal with that A? Okay, well that's it. Woo!